So the content today is how we are going to use testing in order to understand how to train. We are going to talk about aerobic high intensity training and anaerobic training, which are two components that are essential in the uh, preparation. We're talking about power training. We will talk about the prehab uh, pre training and prevention training. And at the end, uh, I will show you a couple of programs you may use. And then after that, as Casper said, we will have a number of uh, questions uh, to discuss. The first thing is the testing. And the testing is a very useful tool in order to get a bit of understanding of what's the actual level of the players at the moment. And one use test that is very uh, closely related to the performance in the game is the yo-yo intermittent recovery test. It's a test where you run 20 meters in, in one direction and uh, 20 meters in the other direction. And then you have a 10 second rest and you wait for the next signal. The signals are coming faster and faster. That means the speed has to increase at a point the player is not able to uh, conduct at at the certain at the speed that is required so he has to finish the test and the test result is then the distance covered during uh, during the test and you may compare those data with the uh, different uh, types of uh, other players and give an idea what's the actual level of the player Here you do have a test that provides a valid information about your player's football specific fatigue resistance ability to recover from high intensity exercise, which is quite essential in football. And we also have seen that it is closely related to the high intensity performance in a football game. And you can use it to assess the capacity of the, of the players. And you can actually test 30 players in 15 minutes. So it is a very simple and useful information you will get when you do this type of test. So first of all, discuss uh, these components, aerobic, anaerobic training, power training, and prevention and prehab. Uh, we will start with the aerobic and anaerobic the training. The most important part of the training, as we discussed today, is the aerobic high-intensity training. For in the first week when the players are coming back uh, to the team training, and then it has five all the way, meaning that it should have a very high priority. Then the speed endurance training should also have a high priority, but not for the first week because the players are not used to this type of intense work. So we have to be a bit careful not to overload them when we start the training again. But as soon as they have get accustomed to train again, we can increase the priority to five, and in the last two weeks, around four. Speed training should have high priority. It should have been done a bit if they have an opportunity before they come because they have to prepare the speed training as well. And it does have a high priority also towards the start of the season. The basic idea about the, the aerobic and anaerobic training, and I'll just show you a few examples of the aerobic uh, moderate intensity and aerobic high intensity training. Uh, the good thing here is that we can control things very carefully, as we discussed here, because you need to be in certain heart rate zones when you do your training. Here you look at the moderate intensity training, where we are aiming at 80% of maximum heart rate, whereas the high intensity training about 90%. It's easier to look here because in this case, we brought up an example where a guy that had a maximum heart rate of 200. You need to know the maximum heart rate of, of the player. And that information you can get from the yo-yo test because at the end of the test, they will reach the maximum heart rate. So you can get the numbers in 15 minutes for 30 players. But uh, here it, it just say that if you have a maximum heart rate of 160, uh, it's okay for the moderate intensity, but you need to be on average about 180 when you do the aerobic high intensity training. We have introduced also a range because as I said, there's a huge variation in the heart rate in any game because it depends on where the player is in relation to, to the ball. So let's talk about the aerobic high intensity training, a very essential type of uh, training, just to show you an example where one team just added 30 minutes, 30 minutes of aerobic high intensity training for 12 weeks. And we compared the yo-yo test performance before and after the 12 weeks. And you do see a marked increase because this is before where they reached about 850 meters. 
after 12 weeks, just by 30 minutes of extra training, they were close to 1,000 meter on average. So it's not much you need actually for these type of players to improve their performance, but it also shows that the aerobic high intensity training is a very important aspect of improving performance. Good, so we move on to the power training in uh, football and it's no doubt that the, the higher power you do have, the more explosive you can be in a game. This is one example where this is the strength you can actually lift with your, with your legs and compared to a 30 meter sprint. And it's clear that the more power you have in the legs, the faster you are. But there is a huge range and the range is also due to the agility and the coordination as we're going to discuss a little bit today. We will cover that uh, more uh, next time. Uh, we have the three different types of power training, basic, transference and football power training. So talking about prehab and prevention training, uh, first prehab. Prehab uh, exercises, they uh, aim to activate specific muscles and joints and is used to prepare the players for the activities on the pitch. So this is not something that is proven uh, as such scientifically, uh, but the method has definitely gained in popularity in recent years and the players feel more ready for training and it seems to reduce the number of injuries. So that might be the explanation for the uh, improved um, popularity or increased popularity. The explanation for this relationship may be that the prehab exercises benefit proprioception and flexibility as well as reducing tension and, and muscle soreness. And so the exercises that is usually done in prehab, uh, they are performed with low resistance, either with the body, mini bands or rubber bands as the loading, and it may also include foam rolling. Moving on to the prevention training, uh, the aim of uh, prevention uh, training is to increase the strength of the muscles around the major joint, joints or to correct an imbalance in strength between muscles on other side of a joint in order to avoid injuries. So the focus today has been on the pre-season and uh, we have covered a lot of different types of training. It has been a bit uh, fast, we know, but you will have a chance in the future to get more details about the various types of, of training as such. Anyway, as I said, if you're in a hurry to get the information, you can get them tomorrow because many of the things we have been talking about today are in, in this book, at least the exercises that uh, we have described today. So the next uh, seminar will be on uh, Thursday, where we'll talk about how to improve performance during the season, because many coaches are reluctant to do fitness training during the season, which means that they decrease performance. You need to maintain and even increase the intensity, which we are going to discuss uh, on, on Thursday.